Data modeling is the centerpiece of any effective BI project, from entity relationship models that visualize the entities and relationships within the system, to dimensional models which break these elements into facts and dimensions, data models provide a unified, logical view of your data architecture. In essence, they provide a blueprint that drives your data warehouse development from end to end. Hi, my name is Afnan Rehan and I'm a product evangelist here at Astara Software. In this seven-part series, I'm going to be taking you through the essentials of effective data warehousing all the way from modeling your data warehouse to consuming your data in BI tools. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about data modeling. There are various phases involved in the data modeling process. First, business users come up with the initial requirements for the BI system. Next, architects take the specifications and convert them into a logical data model. And then you have the development phases where developers take the schema and use it to build the data warehouse. Let's take a look at some of the key principles to getting this approach right. So the first thing that you need to do is identify where your critical data resides. Is it in an on-premise database, a cloud data lake, or on a CRM platform like Salesforce? You also need to figure out which tables within these systems are relevant to your BI. This should be easy to do if you're already running reports at the operational level. Now you have to quickly replicate these systems in a logical data model. The next thing you want to do is enrich your data models with metadata. That means establishing relationships between entities using appropriate primary and foreign keys, ensuring that you're joining tables correctly and that entity relationship types are correctly defined. So you need to make sure that you've defined your many-to-many, -many, your one-to-many, and your parent-child relationships correctly. Remember, if this metadata varies even slightly from the source, then subsequent reporting and analytics produced by the data warehouse would be inaccurate. You also need to set names and data types for all of the attributes within a given entity. Naming conventions should be standardized across data models and aligned with existing business processes so that they can easily be understood by your stakeholders. The thing is, the more discrepancies there are between data models, the more maintenance activities required, making it much harder to update schemas on a consistent basis. But with this metadata framework in place, you significantly reduce the technical debt created by irregularities in design and development. With this, you have tested and proven templates that can be changed without writing any code. Once you have your metadata enriched model in place, scripts can be generated and propagated directly to a physical database. Now, let's talk a little bit about the process for putting these data models together. I touched up on it a little bit at the beginning, but one thing that I think needs to be emphasized here is that data modeling is not a static activity. The modern data warehouse is expected to serve a variety of user groups across the enterprise. That means BI requirements are constantly evolving and that data models need to be updated continuously. For this kind of incremental iterative data modeling to work, end users must be able to design their own schema that meets their reporting and analytics needs perfectly. In other words, the handoff process of previous generations has to become a thing of the past. The data model should also be able to update dynamically to integrate new sources and tables based on the metadata within the source system. When we talk about the possibility of self-service BI, it's these type of capabilities that we're referring to. Finally, because we're talking about building out the data warehouse in multiple iterations, a system of versioning is also necessary. This way, updates to the original schema can be recorded, monitored, and even rolled back if required. Now, a key advantage of agile data modeling is that you can take a much more granular outlook on the data delivered for BI purposes. Instead of making your enterprise-wide data model accessible to everyone, you can design customized schema to fulfill the requirements of each user group. These teams can then limit their queries to relevant data sets and thus improve the efficiency of their reporting and analytics. At the same time, from a data security perspective, the organization is ensuring that sensitive information is only exposed to authorized users. Finally, let's talk a little bit about the architecture of the data warehouse. So obviously, the favorite schema for about 30 years now has been dimensional modeling. 
In this schema, tables are arranged into a rough, star-shaped structure with a central fact table providing business measures and link dimension tables providing context to these numbers. The dimensional model is primarily designed for fast query performance and provides a lot of flexibility when it comes to adding new sources for reporting. It's also a business process-oriented approach to data warehouse design. In other words, it organizes and presents data in a way that end users can easily understand. But some have pointed out issues with this schema. These issues are generally pertaining to the number of joins required and difficulty in updating the data model when the grain of the new tables differs from the fact table. Then we have the data vault. The data vault is an alternative schema that has been gaining some steam in recent years. This is a flexible architecture that combines the business-oriented approach of the dimensional model with the scalability of the 3NF format espoused by Bill Inman. The data vault consists of hubs, which are the identifying aspects of businesses and contain natural keys for these processes. Then we have links, which serve as intersectional tables defining many-to-many -many relationships between the different hubs in the architecture. And finally, we have satellites, which contain the descriptive attributes for both hubs and links. Depending on your BI requirements, any one of these architectures could be preferred, but the data modeling techniques you employ should allow you to design and propagate any schema, whether it's dimensional modeling, 3NF, or even a data vault. With the Sara Data Warehouse Builder, you get a data model-driven platform that simplifies and automates the schema generation tasks of your data warehouse. This cuts down the development times for months or even years to just a few days. In the process, you reap all of the benefits that come from a smarter, more agile BI architecture.